you guys took a picture of the geometry of space according to my theory. Those big loops that you see that makes petals, that's because, you know, like a supernova explosion is a star that explodes, right? So you don't expect that it's going to organize in a very specific pattern. It's supposed to just go into a chaotic mess, right? But it didn't. This is the first supernova we ever photographed, and it made huge circles intersecting, making a petal structure. So I got excited. Well, they all told me I was full of you know what, and uh, that you know this was just a random event. Well, well, from one random event to the other, uh, they take took picture of a next supernova, you know that exploded and generated exactly the same thing. Intersecting ring, making petal-like structures, just like what I had predicted. And then this one was really sweet because when you look closer in the middle, there was an eye, like the eye of Horus, you know? even with a twinkle in the eye. <laughs> but what got me really excited about that one is that the two enter in the center of our sun is a black hole. I'll do some of my presentation now, but that's okay. <laughs> you did really good at moving forward in your conclusions. And that's exactly what I concluded to. And this is one of the reason I got kicked out of physics conference, is that I didn't just tell them the sun of all galaxies were black hole. I told them all suns, including our sun, is a black hole. Including planets. Planets, atoms, everything we look at. The energy level of planets, for instance, all the gases, plan the gases planet in our solar system all produce between 70 and 80 percent more energy than it receives from the sun. There is nothing in current physics that explains why. There's got to be an internal and en energy producing dynamic that, ge that generates that, and I believe that's a black hole. Inside all orbiting bodies, you find the event horizon of a black hole, and depending if you're far enough from that event horizon, then you're, you're far enough from the high gravitational field so that it is like the surface of this planet, a weak gravitation. Do you guys understand? So, is that the case then? Would there actually be a solid core inside the crust, or would the crust be hollow? It would be like a sphere with a hollow inner, with the, That's with right. the black hole in the center. So That's, that's right. The hollow Earth theory. Is what hollow the Earth, hollow Sun, hollow galaxy, which we see, Ho hollow atoms. We see that the, uh, the atom is 99.9% .9 space, uh, and so on. Go ahead. Do you think that this? This picture up here uh, is also reproduced by the Big Bang itself. Yeah, you could see. You see, if this if this cycle of a black hole gathering too much plasma and then spinning it out can be applied at all resolution of the fractal, then you can go. You could say that the Big Bang is just a, an enormous black hole that gathered too much material and eventually spit it out like and that created our universe. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you, you can see it at all levels. You can see it in the creation of, of uh, solar systems. You can see it even in the creation of, uh, of atoms and so on. You know, at electron clouds orbitals jump from one quanta to the other if you add enough energy. Well, then maybe you could use this, this pattern to, to predict the distribution of matter out there in the universe. You can, and that's why we wrote the scaling law. 
That's the start of predicting the patterns of distribution of matter. First of all, you describe its scale. Yes, you should see these circles throughout space. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, we do. I mean, all of them. Yeah, you will find. So, so the universe would have this form. Now, this form is not a 2D form. It's actually a 3D double torus. And we're going to see what that looks like in a minute. Well, if you said people are black holes too, then why don't people gather too much material and then we do. We do. <laughs> yeah, we shed. We shed. Uh, we the the cell division is occurring at a million cell a second, I think. Okay, and you're shedding stuff all the time uh, in order for your system to stay in balance. There's all sorts of ways you can look at it. For instance, throughout the day, you radiate energy all the way through throughout the day and then you as you radiate energy you gather information and you gather food and so on and all this stuff go ahead if the earth would be hollow would it have a nucleus in the middle the nucleus is singularity the nucleus is is the from the event horizon of a black hole from the surface of a black hole everything inside there is collapsed towards singularity leaving vacuum behind so, um, so the center of the Earth would be a singularity. So would be the center of the of the um, of the solar system, the Sun. What you're saying is that singularity is basically infinite. You're yes. You're infinitely moving towards a singular point, but never really fully. You never reach, because it has infinite potential of division. So, you know, remember I was saying we all observe things from a different angle, so we're all different. But we're, we all agree that this is a pan in general, you know. Depending on what you've taken for breakfast, you might think it's a pink elephant, but that's a whole other story. But in general, we all agree that this is a pan. Why? Well, because we, although all of our heads, we're standing on a sphere, right? We're all standing on a sphere. And although all of our heads are diverging, right? to infinity, all of our feet are converging to the same singularity that links us all. So as far as the Earth goes, from its point of observation, we are all agreeing on the consensus reality, which is constantly changing as a result of the way we are we're changing our relationship to reality on the surface. You see, you guys see wh how that works? No? No. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, uh, let me clarify that. Although we all have an individual way of observing the universe because we are all our own singularity. And when I say that, I don't say it trivially. If you are the singularity centering a universe, I mean it literally. If the universe is infinite, there is a universe out there that you are the perfect center of. Okay? So I, I'm not just making an allegory here. You are the center of the universe. But if, uh, and then that universe that you're the center of, that is the center of an even a larger one and so on and so on well okay so now you observe the the universe from your own center but although you observe it from your own center we are all connected to the same gravitational center the center of the earth the same singularity holds us all together and that allows us to have a common agreement on the planet that this is a felt pen. Do you see? And not a pink elephant. Right? Otherwise, all of our views would diverge so far apart, we wouldn't agree on anything. You see? But the system is so that, that there is always a larger center that generates a consensus 
of observation between all the independent systems of that, sy of that organization. For instance, all of your cells agree to be you, right? Because they're, whole, they're all held by a specific singularity gravitational center, which is you, right? And they all collaborate to generate you. Is that clearer now? Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of hands up. Go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to know that since you said atom is 99.99999 space, yeah. and if you say Earth is a, you know, it's, so it's a black hole of atom, does that mean that Earth can have that much space in it? Well, it does because Earth is made out of atoms and all.